we've made our way all the way to the East Coast for round 12 of AMA Pro Flat Track. Delaware International Speedway is now home to a new generation of flat trackers who have never raced on this surface before. The Speedway has long straights and slight banking corners, which is going to make for a great, exciting night of racing. For you die-hard flat track fans, the race for the 2015 Grand National Championship doesn't get any better than this. Only one point separates the 2014 Grand National Champion Jared Meese and a very hungry Brian Smith. Todd off two back-to-back -back wins, including the Charlotte Half Mile and the Springfield Mile. Does he have what it takes to take the win here at the Roar on the Shore? This is not the time to leave your seats. The best in flat track starts now. Welcome to the pre-race show. We're at Delaware International Raceway for round number 12 of the AMA Pro Grand National Flat Track Series. I'm Scotty Dubler. In case you live underneath the rock and haven't heard, next week's race at Calistoga has been postponed. We don't know any information yet, but when we do, we'll let you know possibly by the end of the show when we're going to push that back due to the wildfires out there in California. What a points battle we have going on this year so far, and it's getting down to the wire with just three rounds left. Who's going to win the championship? To recap what happened at the Scorcher in Springfield, let's go catch up with Danny Medin. Thanks, Scotty. Not only was it super hot at the Springfield Mile, but the action heated up pretty quick, and it started out early in the day for the GNC2 Heat 2 race. Light turns green. The Bill Warner Kawasaki jumps out in a hurry. That's the 54A of Bromley. Bromley's got company around the outside. Here comes Fisher. Fisher goes to work on the outside and chops down and takes the line away from Bromley. So it's Fisher, Bromley, Helmholtz, and Miner. Lap number one comes in the books. Davis Fisher leads them around lap number one. East. That's why he's your points leader. He's very strong at every racetrack you go to. Yes, he is. And Avery uh, makes a draft move by Bromley in the second. Let's see if uh, those two go. Oh, Davis Fisher uh, blows up, takes out, uh, Tristan, takes out Avery. Tristan Avery. Has an issue with his motorcycle. Man, Avery that was a nowhere scary to go. moment. Ran to the nowhere. Side of the 67 and Fisher puts it down on the inside of the guardrail. Couldn't see it back there on the back straightaway. Fisher throws his hand up, steps off the motorcycle. Avery has nowhere to go. He's come off the corner. He's tucked in. Bike starts to tie up. He puts his hand up. I'm slowing down. He tries to dive to the inside, and Avery was committed to go to the inside and really nowhere to go. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, that's a that's a tough call. You know, in in the case of Davis Fisher trying to get off the off the off the racing line and out of harm's way, sometimes brings it brings harm to you but uh very fortunate incident that for, it was not worse for, for everybody everybody involved here that uh nobody went down just navy are you okay yeah just uh banged up my foot again and probably my leg too but uh we're gonna tough it out and finish the heat race off strong can you take us through quickly what happened uh just davis threw his hand up and i basically had nowhere else to go and i tried the outside and that didn't really work and he and then he started moving down and kind of had no I'm just glad he's okay. Red light off, first yellow on for five seconds. Second yellow on, it goes uh, from a half a second to two and a half, and then we go green. And they're off into the first corner. Here comes GNC2 heat race number two. It's a drag race to the first corner. Bromley will lead him in there once again, and there is Tristan Avery in the 16S. The 16S up right around the outside edge of the groove. Uh, the Looks like the 36 of Colby Carlisle, a minor. Uh, Avery gets freight trained there coming through uh, through turns one and two. And look who's in first and second. The riders are in first and second that brought out the red flag. Here comes Charlotte Keynes up the inside of Jameson Minor back there for fourth, <laughs> fifth, and sixth. And Here's Tristan Avery marching down, run, runs down Fisher on this last lap. Let's see if he can line up and get a good draft. Checkered flag in the air. Doesn't line up quite quick enough. Fisher takes the win. Avery, the rest of the riders across the start finish line in a blur. Fisher takes home another heat race win. In the GNC1 Heat 1 race, all eyes were on the number 15 of Nicole Meese. She was riding Willie McCoy's Springfield Mile winning Harley Davidson. Nicole Meese on the bright orange Willie McCoy special. That's the bike Willie McCoy won two miles here. Nicole Meese gets the nod. This is her last full season. She'd love to get on the podium here at Springfield. Here we go, watch the light, it is green. Johnson off in a hurry. From the inside, Vandercoy 
Johnson's going to lead him into the first corner. Good, good start uh, from the outside there. Jake Johnson gets a good run into turn one. Immediately puts a couple bike links with uh, the rookie Jared Vanderkoy in tow in second. Doug Lawrence on the 73 and third. Nicole Meese in the four spot down the back straight to go. And they stand up in a hurry. Here comes Nicole Meese thinking about a four way draft. It's going to be Doug Lawrence, though, making the pass in the lead. Vanderkoy comes along with. Now Nicole Meese takes over the third spot. So Johnson, our early leader, from first to fourth down the back straightaway through three and four. Doug Lawrence to lead him off of four. Here comes Nicole Meese. She's been very strong on the inside. She shows the wheel. Vanderkoy sees her coming. He elects to move over. Nicole Meese, your leader, down the back straightaway on the 15 bike. Van Coy in second. Now Jake Johnson put himself back in third. Doug Lawrence right now, now up to the third spot on the 73. It is Nicole Meese. Van Coy gets sideways in three and four. Here comes Nicole Meese out front. Doing a good job out front and opening up a four bike link advantage coming off at of turn four. She looks very comfortable, very racy. They got These guys are going to have to work together. They keep racing three wide up into one. She's going to march off into the disc. Here they come. Last lap down the back straight. What's Nicole going to do this time? Well, it looks like she's got a good run. Drafting up the inside. Wants to take the point. Leading off into turn three. She gets into the, gets into the point position. She wants to get through the middle. Oh, Jake getting up the inside trying to make a pass. Johnson. Bucking and hopping, getting a good grip. Here they come off of four. Nicole Meese leads them. Can she hang on to the win? Yes, yes she, she does. does. Nicole Meese hangs on to the heat race win as the times go into the books. Nicole Meese looking for her first ever Grand National victory, and it could happen here today at the legendary Springfield Mile. Your heat race winner, the number 15, ladies and gentlemen, the racing lady, Nicole Meese. There's your dad, Mark, giving her a victory hug. and. Take off her helmet. We're going to go track side with Danny Medine. Danny's caught up to a very fast young lady. Danny, take it away. Thank you guys. Springfield Mile, get on your feet like you just were. Nicole, this whole crowd was on their feet for you. Is it a combination of a perfect bike? Is it a combination of a last season? Fill us in. Oh man, the bike was working so good. We felt strong all day. Uh, my dad, Willie McCoy, his whole crew are working extra hard and uh, we want to go out with a win. So. Thank you guys all so much for coming out and supporting us. Now this bike has a lot of history, so I'm gonna have Willie McCoy sneak in here. What does it mean to you to have Nicole Meese ride in this machine? What an honor to see her out there uh, going fast like that. Harley Davidson Wausau, they've been awesome supporters and for Nicole to ride my bike today, I, I feel honored and uh, what a way to start the day to win the heat race. But I wanna come back up here and her champ spray champagne here in a little while. Wow. Absolute pure domination. He is setting a mark for those in Heat 3 to, sh to chase. There you go. 42 takes the win. Brian Smith, here comes everybody else now lined up, coming off of four. It's going to be a battle for second and third. Here they come to the finish line. And Shoemaker as well on the Triumph gets back up into the fourth position. Did you realize that you had such a huge lead out there? Yeah, I thought I had a little bit of a gap, and I looked back, and uh, you know, I had a pretty big gap. But, uh, you know, it's just the Heat race. So uh, we got our, still got to do our homework and uh, hopefully in the main event just like that. So you had some bike issues in practice, you switched machines, is this going to be the one that's going to take the win here today? Yeah, this is Old Faithful that I won on last weekend in Charlotte and uh, hopefully we can do it again today in front of this uh, hot Springfield crowd. Here we go, heat race number three, there's the green light in a hurry. Keep your eyes on the inside, it's Meese on the outside is your fast qualifier. Kale took me, they'll take me into the first corner, who's going to lead them? Looks, Looks like, like Corey, Corey Texter up front with the number one of Jared Meese behind, the 69 of Sammy Halbert in third. C-Tech just sat on this motorcycle last Friday for the very first time about 10 days ago. Now he leads the Springfield Mile. Meese in second, third spot is the 69 of Sammy Halbert. Taken in the fourth position. Lap number one going in the books around the corner. Here they come down off of turn number four, down the front way. Looks like Texture gets a little sideways coming off the corner. Here comes Meese in second. Sammy Howard's coming with him on the 69 bike. The 65 out front's looking pretty good. The triple wide going into turn one. Meese goes to the front. Howard follows suit. White flag is out. Sammy Howard goes to the lead into the first corner. Meese comes with him in second. Corey Texter's in third. He's about to have his hands full with uh, Briar Bauman on the 14 and Shayna on the 25. Brother and sister, who's going to make the main, who's not? Saw Mies there take a little peek back over his shoulder and say, all right, who do I got to deal with? He wants to sit here and see, do I want to follow? He elects to, to ease up, follows the 69 of Halbert off into the corner. Oh. They get through that little broken up area. 
Knees trying to line him up. See which way Halbert's going to go. Coming off the corner. It's going to be a run to the line. Draft pass effort coming red. up. I see red light all over the place. Where's the red flag? Checkers. Briar Bauman, Briar is Bauman. On the ground on the 14 bike. Going off into turn three. Looks like we had an incident there. Uh, I see pieces all the way back there. That's his settlement seat back there laying in the dirt. But uh, man, Briar going down. We yeah. missed it. We were going to be coming towards the checkered flag, and that bike is mangled. In the main event, it was business as usual with a large group of riders swapping positions for the lead. Eventually, it was down to only four riders with Jake Johnson leading the pack. Brian Smith went on to win his second Springfield Mile this season with a slingshot move to the outside to take the win. And welcome back to the pre-race show. The points battle is definitely heating up right now. It's the Jared Meese, the Jared Meese, the one sitting beside me is in the lead right now. He's got one point advantage over Brian Smith and 21 points over Slam Sammy Halbert. Jared, how you feeling tonight? I feel really good. You know, I'm excited to be uh, Delaware on the East Coast. Uh, unfortunately, with Hagerstown getting rained out, a lot of the family and friends, because I grew up in Pennsylvania, can uh, at least come and watch me once this season. So do you think coming to a new racetrack helps you with this being, you know, three rounds left, a one-point lead? Do you uh, like the idea of uh, riding a new racetrack? Yeah, I do. Well, you know, it's new for everybody. Um, I definitely like the, uh, the half miles over the miles, so to say, for sure. Um, but this is new. It's a little bit flatter of a track. It's definitely got some sand mixed in with the clay. So um, it's, it's cool. It's, it's unique. Awesome. So at Springfield, you were actually in the third heat race your wife was in the heat race right in front of you. Were you able to watch that heat race and see her win, or were you f focusing on the very next race, which was you going out to the same racetrack? Um, yeah, I definitely was, you know, hoping for big things for Nicole. She was definitely on a strong horse, uh, thanks to Willie McCoy. And, um, you know, I seen she had a lot of success and a lot of muscle early on, and I said, that, man, if she can get off turn four in the lead, I think she could win this. And sure enough, so uh, that was cool for her to set the benchmark there in that first heat race. And, uh make it happen you know that was her first uh, heat race win uh, of her career and you know what a better way to do it this the last spring field of her career well as somebody who's been married for almost 20 years and you a couple of years now uh were you nervous as a husband no your wife you running up front no not how does at that all. work no not at all i mean when you know it's kind of hard to explain but it's just something that her and i have always done since day one and how we met so Racing is just natural to both of us, and, you know, I've seen her unfortunately fall down and, and, and go down, and, I mean, of course, that makes you nervous, but, you know, her running up front, no, I was really happy for her, and, you know, to beat a guy like Jake Johnson, who has won Springfield before and is on the factory Harley-Davidson bike, um, and, and beat, uh, you know, him to the line, that was rewarding, that was cool, and I know that's, uh, you know, one of her big highlights in her career, for sure. Well, let's talk business. The championship's coming down to the line. You have a one-point advantage. You had the mechanical at Charlotte. You know, do you try to forget about that, or how do you how do you let that go and focus on tonight's event, Calistoga and Las Vegas? Well, you know, it's spilt milk. It's over with. You know, you can't really dwell much on it. Uh, we had a lot of lot of strong, um, <laughs> we had a lot of a lot of strength there that night for sure. And you know, I don't know if we could have won the race, but I think uh, a second place was definitely solid. And uh, the points that we would have got from that would have been uh, very rewarding and very helpful. But um, you know, it, it's disappointing, you know, the whole team works so hard, and, um, you know, as you can see, Sammy Sweet right there, you know, he's, he was his bum. We were all very upset with that, you know, uh, you know, after X Games, we thought all the bad luck was out of the way, but, you know, we pick ourselves up, and we move on, and we got a second at Springfield, and, you know, that was, that's a tough race, of course, you're going into the mile with all the, the muscle that the Kawasaki ha of Smith has and his whole team. Um, we tried to pick up the pieces the best we could there with getting a second, and we did that, so uh, now it's, it's, you know, our tracks uh, are coming up right here. We're, we're in Delaware on a half mile. We go to Calistoga, hopefully on a half mile. And we end on a very little uh, small short track, which, you know, could go anybody's way. But I think if uh, me and Smith are doing it out, I, I feel like uh, the singles is a little bit more in my favor. Well, with, with you as a rider having a one-point lead, we know the pressure that's on you. You know you got to go out and do your job. How much pressure do you think is, there is on your team? Guys like Kenny Tolbert, 
and Sammy Sweet, all the guys turning the wrenches and helping make the decisions on the motorcycles. What, do you, what are they going through right now? Yeah, I mean, Kenny's definitely, um, I don't know, wouldn't say feeling the pressure, but he's just working really hard on, on the motorcycles these days. I mean, you know, when we pulled the restrictors out of these motorcycles, honestly, it really hurt and shortened the fuse on, the, on, the, uh, on some bikes, and one of them being ours. I mean, um, hats off to, you know, an American muscle company like uh, Harley-Davidson. You know, 1970, 1980s base technology is still winning uh, Grand National flat track races here in 2014, 15, you know what I mean? And, and miles and stuff like that. And there's no other companies out there that can say that. I mean, you take Yamaha Kawasaki, for example, you can't take a 1995 Yamaha that won a superbike race and go win the current superbike today. But you can uh, an XR750, and that's fantastic. But we're definitely pushing the envelope with these things and uh, pulling them restrictors out and giving them that much torque and horsepower makes it harder, and it really makes it harder on Kenny Tolbert, my mechanic. And, um, you know, I don't say that any extra pressure is on him. I think he's just doing his normal routine that he did with Chris and everybody else before him. And it's just uh, the pressure is on a little bit of everybody, not just me and my team, but also the Crosley team too. And, um, you know, uh, I've been in this situation a lot the last few years, so dealing with it for me is more just uh, going through the motions. I mean, I know what I have to do and where I have to be, and... Um, where the chips fall, they fall. Sounds good. That's the thoughts of the jammer, Jared Meese. We're going to go down to into the pitter and catch up with Danny Medine. We're here at Delaware International Speedway for the first time for AMA Pro Flat Track. Brandon Robinson, this is not only a new track for everybody, it's obviously a new track for you. What's going through your mind right now? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Do you have high expectations for yourself? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's, it's cool when you come to a new track and everyone has an even playing field, you know, no one has a distinct advantage over somebody else, so it makes it uh, pretty fun, you know, I'm just looking forward to getting out there and, and trying to figure out the track the best we can. So you kind of have a strategy figured out, is the Triumph going to make it on the podium tonight? I know you're hungry for a win. Yeah, for sure, it's uh, been a couple of years since I got a win, so hopefully, but uh, you know, I'm feeling pretty confident, I think we have a, a good bike and hopefully we get a set up good enough to, to get, a, get the job done tonight. And Brandon, you were looking awesome at Springfield, so you guys keep your eyes on the number 44, Brandon Robinson, back to the booth. Hey, thanks, Danny. Speaking of the Las Vegas Flat Track Finals, also the Super Prestigio is going to be there. Chris Carr, that is going to be one heck of an event. Well, it should be a lot of fun. You know, on the flat track, AMA Pro Flat Track side, we have uh, Grand National Champions from the last 10 years, Kenny Coolbeth, Jake Johnson, Brad Baker, and Jared Meese. And uh, the winner of the 2015 X Games and our guest at the moment, the number 42 of Brian Smith. So... Uh, it, those are the first five that we're announcing so far, and here we have, have Brian with us. Well, Welcome, Brian. So I guess. Brian, just by winning the X Games, that's all you had to do to get invited to the That was it. I just, got I just got lucky and won it. You got lucky. Now I go to the Super Prestigio. <laughs> well, you're, you're having probably the best year of your career. Five wins on the Grand National Circuit plus the X Games. Yeah. You know, what's been the key to your success this year? Great team, man. Uh, everybody's back working together this year. Ricky Howerton running the, uh, running the team, running the ship, and... Uh, it's it showed in the results. Uh, I mean, everything from last year. We had a good season last year with five wins, and uh, you know had a mis misfortune and unfortunately uh, lost the championship by a couple points. So to be one point back at this point, I think we're sitting pretty good, and that's due to Ricky Howerton really pushing myself and the rest of the team to give me great motorcycles. Well, we started off the season in Daytona with a pair of short tracks where your results were nothing spectacular. You burned yeah. your provisional, and we're finishing up the series indoors in Las Vegas on a real small bull ring. Uh, what do you think you have to do the next two weeks to ensure a, a Grand National Championship for your team? Basically, after I get home from here, it's short track boot camp. I might even come out to one of the super camps or something. And, come uh, on out. <laughs> you know, le learn something. I mean, I have won two short track nationals before. I think people forget that. So I know how to do it. We're on different bikes now. The motocross frames lower down into flat trackers. And them don't handle like a like a dirt tracker frame, you know, like as you know, Chris, and uh, I'm sure Scotty knows too. They're different. And uh, I haven't got my hand on them just yet or a handle on them just yet. So just got to do a little homework, a little testing, but I think I can get it done. Well, there, there's a lot of time between now That's and good. then. It is November 20th, yeah. and we're sitting here at, uh, you know, basically seven weeks earlier. Do you Will you spend a bunch of time on dirt? Yeah, I mean, th I don't have a choice. I mean, I d didn't come this far in my career and work this hard to, to slack off, you know. I don't uh, prefer short tracks or DTX bikes, but I'm not going to let myself or the team down and all my supporters and friends, you know, so 
not to mention my family that's been behind me since I was, you know, five years old. So I'm just going to work my butt off and uh, hopefully get it done, you know, if it does come down to that short track. I'd like to wrap it up maybe tonight somehow or, you know, at Calistoga, then I can just sit up here and call the race with you guys. <laughs> yeah, you, li you like it in here, <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, as long as we can serve us some beer, I'll, I'll call it if I got it wrapped only, up. Only if it's from Kid Rock, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so you started a new trend. When you climbed the fence at Springfield, how did you get to thinking about that? Uh, you know, it's just something I did. I actually did it a few years back, and uh, it's just something different. Everybody does a burnout or a wheelie or something, and I've never seen a flat tracker climb the fence before, and you see the IndyCar guys and NASCAR guys do it. So a few years back, I did it, and uh, it's kind of signature. Plus, you're just reacting with the uh, crowd. That's the closest a motorcycle racer can get to the crowd and see their, their excitement. That just really pumps me up. All right, well, check out this picture. Danny Medine's actually, she's trying it. She wants to see if she can, do, you know, she, Im imitate you. And she you, you think she did it better? She definitely looks better than me, I'd have to say. But she, she needs to get up the fence a little farther for sure. Well, next maybe time. she just wants to take that first step nice and easy. Yeah, and she don't have a steel shoe, so we'll have to get her one of them next time. All right, so that's the words <laughs> from Brian Smith right there. He's currently second in the points, one point out of the championship. Let's go trackside and catch up with Danny Medine one more time. We're going to talk a little GNC2 action, but we're going to backtrack up to the Springfield Mile Davis. You had a little bit of an issue in an earlier heat. Can you kind of just recap as quick what happened and how it involved Tristan? Yeah, in the heat race, uh, my bike lost power. ended up being the battery breaking down, so I uh, tried to get off the track, but uh, Tristan caught my back tire, and uh, glad that we didn't both go down. Yeah, Tristan, you saved it. Can you kind of remember exactly how that happened and how you, you know, tried to avoid him? Yeah, I mean, I saw Davis kind of threw his hand up kind of last minute, and it's kind of one of those things you can't really avoid on a mile going over 100 mile an hour coming out of a corner. And I had nowhere else to go, and I'm lucky that uh, I kept on two wheels, and he did too, and neither of us, neither of us uh, got hurt, and the uh, bike was okay, and we were able to rejoin the field. And the rest of your guys' day went pretty fantastic, I can much say. You took the win, and Tristan, you ended up finishing second, so you turned a, a kind of a crazy day to start, and you turned it around. So what was that like for you? Uh, yeah, it was uh, started off the day. Uh, we were pretty good and felt great and had that little incident and uh, kind of put us back down for a little bit. And uh, halfway through the heat race, it just kind of felt good and comfortable enough to start pushing again. And uh, after that, won the dash and uh, got second in the main, so can't complain. Awesome. And Davis Fisher, you got everybody chasing you down. Does it make you nervous? A little bit. I mean, I uh, just got to stay focused and uh, not let it get to me, I guess. <laughs> All right, that's a new weekend here, though, for Delaware, so keep your eyes on these two. Welcome back to the booth. Don't forget to hit us up on Twitter. Use the hashtag DelawareFT. There's going to be a Cortec tank bag giveaway. Whoever has the coolest tweet will win that. Chris Carr and myself get to pick it. No pictures are allowed. We, we, we want to put your tweet up here on the screen on fanschoice.tv. And we've been joined in the booth by our third-place rider in the point standings, Slamming Sammy Halbert. How are you feeling tonight, man? I feel good. You know, another race day, and uh, I'm ready to go. Well, you got to sit back and think, you know, Brian Smith and Jeremy's been getting all this attention all year long. Are you sitting back thinking, I'm going to wreck the party? Yeah, you know, I definitely want to get up in the mix and, and get a win. That's kind of been the thing that's been lacking uh, with me for a little bit. I haven't grabbed a win at a national in a while, so just uh, just doing my thing, and uh, hopefully we can end up on top tonight. You know, I think I, think I got it as good of a chance as anybody tonight. Well, it seems like you're always up there in the mix, and we got some onboard footage from your the, the GoPro that was on your rear fender. And have you gone back there and studied that and seen what's going on right around you? You know, every every race we go to, it seems like you're right there. Yeah, definitely. Um, watch the GoPro after the race. Kind of wish I had a front-facing camera um, from the last one. But, uh, it got tight there in the last turn. Does that scare you when they're right there? You know, you, that happened right behind you. Brandon looks like he got sucked into the draft and hit the inside guardrail and hit Cool Beth, and they kind of went off the groove a little bit. Does that scare you to know that that stuff's all going on around, around you? Well, I mean, uh, what I had going on in front of me was pretty scary. Um, I got, got pretty close <laughs> there going into the last turn. Uh, you know, Brian drafted pretty low down the back stretch, and, uh, and I followed him down there, and knew, knowing that Jared would kind of stuff him going into the last turn, hoping that that would leave the door open to sneak under Brian, but instead uh, Brian really checked up, and um, I had to kind of back her in there into the last turn under the groove and kind of slid up from under the groove, front end pushing, and like almost hit Brian. It, it was scary um, because the way things kind of bottled up there and Brian checked up, so it was scary for me, um, and I had no idea what was you know, going on behind me, obviously. Well, fortunately, the remainder of the season, you know, we got a couple half miles. You've got a, a, a lot of half mile wins. You have uh, an indoor short track, which I know you, you've done a lot of in the, in the wintertime up in Washington. Do you think these next three races 
or Sammy Halbert type races for you to get get yourself a championship? Yeah, you know, the championship's going to be tough, but um, I'm just going to kind of keep doing what I've been doing all year and just focusing on, on trying to finish up front. And uh, I think that being with the new team, that kind of things are starting to come to me a little bit. The team's starting to work together better. We're getting, I'm getting used to the bikes, and, uh, and, and so things are just kind of starting to click a little better now. And, uh, and I, I feel like any tra track we go to, um, you know, I got a shot at doing well at. So uh, I'm looking forward to these last few races and, and trying to finish it out strong. One thing you still have that the guys in front of you don't have, you still have your provisional start card left. Those two guys have already burned those. Is that is that in your mind at all? Do you worry about that, or is it just something that you have in your back pocket? Not really, man. Don't don't plan on using that ever. You know, um, I've had a few seasons where I've where I've never used that, and and that's that's the plan is to not not pull that out. So don't really think about that. Don't want to use it when when you do use it. You don't get paid as much in the main event, and uh, so I don't want to pull that out. <laughs> oh, well, I, I would think going into Las Vegas, having that in your pocket, with that being a small track and, a, and an altered format, which they haven't announced publicly yet, I would think having a provisional be something of, of extreme value going into the final round. Yeah, it is, but if you're using the provisional, you're already, like, way <laughs> back there. So, <laughs> you know, that's, like, worst-case scenario. I want a whole shot in my heat race, whole shot to main. That's all it takes at an indoor if you can just have – Two hole shots, they can just be one, you know, over right from there. So just got to hope those indoors just kind of go your way, and, uh, and and we'll see. That's Sammy Halbert, number 69. Keep your eyes on him. Currently third in the point standings. We appreciate him stopping by. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for opening ceremonies. These riders are going to get one lap to check out the racetrack. Up first is the GNC2 class, and they will have one heat race out of this first heat race.